Hey guys, it's Steve Gums with Vost coming at you with another video in regards to Avaya CMS. In this video, we're going to cover setting up ODBC to talk to a CMS. We'll have a part two of this video that's going to cover linking external servers such as SQL Server into the CMS as well using the DSN we're going to create in this video. So let's get started with this. To get started, we're not going to need a lot of information from the CMS, but two critical pieces of information, and we're also going to grab some other pieces while we're in there. So the first thing you're going to need is your IP address. We're not really going to cover how to get your IP address in the video. Hopefully you have that. Um, if you don't, you can't get connected, so I can't really show you how to grab it from inside the CMS. The second piece of information we're going to need is the host name. We're just going to type host name at the command line, one word, and that's going to give us the name of the server. You can see it in the prompt normally, but since the prompt is a set variable, I don't trust it 100% of the time, because you can actually set that to anything you want. So typing host name is going to give you that confirmation there. The other thing we're going to do while we're in here is we're going to verify our ODBC licenses, how many we have, and so what we're going to do with that is we're going to connect with CMS SVC, we're going to type that at the command line, and then we're going to choose option one for auth display. Auth display is going to show us what the CMS has given us as far as licensing, what we have permissions to do, and at the very bottom we're going to see ODBC licenses. That's going to tell you how many concurrent connections you can have. Don't think that's how many connections you're going to have total. Concurrent connections are at the same time. So when you've got an ODBC connection reaching into the CMS, they're very, very fast. They're going to connect, they're going to grab their information, they're going to get out. So they don't hold those licenses very long. So you tend not to need very many of these licenses. So that's good. This next thing we're going to grab is we're going to just verify in the bottom of the Informix configuration file the port number and the server name. This should just be CMS underscore and then the host name that we grabbed earlier, and it's on 50,001. But just tailing this file, like you can see in the video right here, is going to verify that. You'll also see there is a host name in there, CMS underscore net, on 50,000. I don't recommend using this, and that is for one particular reason. If you have more than one CMS, you're going to try to connect to it, and when you go to set up your DSN that we're going to do in a little bit, you ask, it asks for the server name. So you put in CMS underscore net, you're great, you go to connect to another CMS and you try to put CMS underscore net in there again and the DSN gets all confused and tries to replace IP addresses. So don't do that. Stick with the CMS underscore host name on 50001, you're going to be good to go. So now that we got the CMS information, let's get to the Windows side. Okay, we didn't spend a lot of time in CMS and we really don't need to for this setup. Most of our time is going to be spent in Windows fighting the DSN. And unfortunately, we will have to do a little bit of fighting here, so be prepared for that. The first thing we're going to have to do is actually download the Informix client. This is the software, the ODBC client, the ODBC driver provided by IBM because CMS runs an Informix database. Although Avaya will provide this driver, you can actually get it straight from the IBM website, which is what I did. And I have newer versions and different versions. I've put up a website and a link here for you guys. You can just go grab it off of here. I have the 32 bits, the 64 bits, the Linux versions. We're going to cover all of these in different levels and what you need them for. But if you want to grab them here, you can grab them from vost.com forward slash iConnect. Same exact drivers you're going to get on the Avaya CD or DVD that they're going to provide you. You can also go find them on the IBM website, but they're rather tricky to find. That's why I put them here. So if you're not sure which one to download, the key here is your client. What are you going to use to tap into this DSN? If you're going to use SQL Server, is your SQL Server 32-bit or 64-bit? A lot of people tend to look at the OS and say, I got a 64-bit OS, I need a 64-bit client. Not necessarily true. If you're going to use 32-bit applications to talk to the CMS, you need the 32-bit client to grab that. So if you're going to talk strictly on 64 bits, grab the 64-bit client. That's going to take care of what you need. So we're going to go ahead and download this. When we go to install it, the key to installing it is just go into the custom field, the custom install, and verify that you have ODBC driver installed. That's really the only piece you need. On some of these you'll have to select your language obviously, but that's okay. But that's it. You can uninstall everything else if you don't want it, or you can put in the whole package. Either way it's fine. Your preference, but get that installed. Come back to this video and let's get on to the next step. Okay, so now that we have that installed, what we're going to do is we're going to create a DSN. The easiest way to find this is just to type on the run and type ODBC. The Windows is going to pop it up for you, tell you where it's at. And the only thing to keep in mind here is if you're on a 64-bit machine and you installed the 32-bit client, most likely it's going to pop up the 64-bit ODBC uh, administrator. That's not what you're looking for. You want the 32-bit. So you're going to have to go find 
the ODBC AD32 executable in the Windows directory and run it in order to install the 32-bit client. So let's get started. Now that we have the Windows ODBC admin opened up, what we're going to do is we're going to select a system DSN. The difference between a system and a user DSN is if you select a user DSN, then only that account is going to be able to use that DSN. And since oftentimes the situation is you have a database that's trying to use it or some service, it's best bet to go with a system DSN. So we're going to select a system DSN and hit add and then that's going to pop up our selection for the driver or the kind of client we're going to look to connect with. We're going to choose the Informix client that's there now that we installed it earlier. We're going to press add and then we're going to say um, okay. So that's going to bring us up to the opening window or the main window here that you can see and what we're going to do is give it a name. This name here can be anything that you like. It's not in particular to your CMS or anything like that. It's just the name you're going to reference later to use this DSN. If you want to add a description, you're welcome to it, but it's not a requirement. Now the big window here that we have to deal with is the connection window, and this is where it takes all the settings that we got earlier. The first field in is kind of misleading. Well, it is misleading. It says server name. It's not what you think it is. Is it not the IP address? It's not the DNS. It's that CMS underscore host name that we got earlier. It's referring to the server name in Informix. So don't be misled by that. Oftentimes people will flip flop this and put it in the wrong spot. The next one down is your host name and that is the IP address or the DNS name that you're going to put in there. Preference uh, DNS is always a good idea. I do recommend using DNS for CMS servers, especially when you're doing upgrades or things like that. Supervise your clients. It really helps, but it's not a requirement. Next one down is going to be your service. This is 50001 if you chose the CMS underscore host name, which is what I'm recommending. If you chose the CMS underscore net, then you're going to be at 50000 Moving down to the next one is protocol, and protocol is going to be set to on SOC TCP, ON SOC TCP. The other one you could choose is OL SOC TCP. Both of those seem to work fine. I haven't had any problems with either one of them, but it is one or the other. All the other ones don't seem to work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to CMS, or we're going to go down to the database, excuse me, and we're going to type in CMS. I don't recommend hitting the drop down because what it's going to try to do is initiate a connection in. You're not ready for that. You don't have the user ID, password, and stuff, but it does try to initiate that connection, and it's going to seem like it hangs for a while. So click in the box, type in the word CMS for your database, and then go ahead and click down one more to the username. Throw in the username and the password you're going to use for ODBC, you can use CMS and Sleepy, that's the default. You know, root even works as well for ODBC, but I don't recommend either one of those. I definitely don't recommend root because you can write to your database and that is a horrible idea. Uh, CMS is a default password. Oftentimes people change it for security purposes. So if you decide, hey, I'll throw CMS in there and then somebody resets that password, you're out of luck. So what you want to do is create a standard CMS user. You don't have to give it a bunch of permissions. ODBC doesn't fall into that window and just have somebody set a password for it or you can set the password for it if you're the admin. Uh, so just a standard CMS user throw in that password. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit apply in the bottom right side of this and just be prepared because I'll tell you now we're about to see an error. Okay so you might be thinking hey Steve why did you just tell me to do cancel? Well a little bit weird here. If I hit apply and test which is what's going to happen what you're going to want to do you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> we'll put it that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit apply when you have all your settings in there, that lower right one, and then hit cancel. Now you're going to see an error and it looks like this. This is standard. It's not a standard error, but it's been in Windows for as long as I can remember. It's in all the way up to 2015. It's, it's just there. So when I hit OK on this error and I come back, my screen's all blank and it's all messed up now and that's disheartening, but it's not gone. It's just a Windows bug, so let's work around it. So all we're going to do is hit cancel again. We're going to back out to our main window. We'll see our, our uh, DSN in there that we've created, and we're going to hit edit to come back into that DSN. Your settings will be there when you come back in. It's just a workaround you guys have to do. I apologize, not my fault, but it's, it's just something that goes with the territory. So now that we have that, I want you to click on the environment tab, and a couple boxes down, as you'll see, we're going to just check mark use database locale and then hit that apply in the lower right again. That's going to save those changes. Now click back to connection and do your apply and test and you should be good to go. 
If you get errors, you have problems, you can shoot us an email at support at .com. You can make a comment down below. We'll try to help you out as much as we can. We apologize. We don't have a lot of time uh, to help you guys out, but hopefully we can get you guys rolling. And tune in for part two so we can show you how to link into a server. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope this helped you out solve some of those problems, the little things that are hard to find sometimes, the documentation just isn't out there, the walkthrough guides aren't as good as they should be. If it did help you out, please let us know, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a comment down below. If you have any feedback, we're good for that too, throw it in the comments. We'll try to get to your questions as quickly as we can. We also got some videos coming out soon in regards to custom reporting and some other advanced features on CMS. If there's anything in particular you're really looking for, Go ahead and put it in the comments. Let us know. We'll see if we can get to it for you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a good one.